There's something about change and personal development that is so personal. It only matters to you, it's unique to you, and it should be. It's not somebody else's to define, and it will really, if we're doing the work, never really be seen by anybody. And this is the topic of what I wanna talk about today because so much of what I see is people buying into self-development, personal development, their own path, their own unique path, but it has to fit the script of others. You have to look good for other people. You have to follow another person's lead. And of course, when we first start, that's all good. But sadly, in this world that's inundated with people obsessed with self-help, there's nobody talking about the path that can only be walked by you. The path that nobody cares about, that nobody sees, that's in silence the whole time. And it's such an interesting thing your personal life, your personal wants, desires, your dreams, what is gonna make you a good person, what's, what we're all striving for in so many ways, is defined by what other people think of you. And that needs to stop. You know, our, our personal change, our personal development is gonna follow its own line. It's gonna follow its own path. It can't mimic anybody else's. And this is really difficult for guys at the point of change because when we're at the point of change where we have to make a move, we have to make a move and we have to go, man, I'm gonna move on with my life. I'm gonna take this different road. I'm gonna end up in, in Arwako village uh, making a book and a documentary about uh, history, which is from a completely different language and concept of language and concept of sharing an idea. I'm going to end up being a devout meditator, uh, getting into different aspects of, uh, of spirituality, of self, of personal development all these different things that we confront and change, but because our path is so unique, we have to understand that that's going to change. It's going to be something that nobody can relate with. And this is what's so important. So one of the biggest problems with your personal development is that it's equated to your success in the outside world. And that's one of the only ways that we have to define ourselves is that if we're making enough money, if we're looking good enough, if we get enough validation, if people are liking us, that somehow we're a success. And there's a huge problem with this because one, most of the outside world is completely insane and has no moral code and no discipline, no work on themselves, nothing. But in addition to that, the actual journey of the self, the actual journey of who you are can only be defined by you. And when we do hear the actual stories of people doing this, one of the things that you hear is that it's a journey that you can only take yourself. You walk into the darkest part of the forest without a trail and you make that trail yourself. What's so sad is that we never hear people talk about their own journey in this, and of course I could, but my only reason to talk about this journey to you is to encourage you to do yours, because you can't do mine. Necesito grabar una video. Si. So I was planning to, to walk up and shoot this on how my path came about and so on, but my friend Norberto, who is a, a Arhuaco Mayor, Elder, and the Cabildo, which is the head of the council, here he decided to walk up with me. So I gotta talk to him or else it would be rude to just talk about my path, which means editing for this is gonna be pretty crazy. you don't know and the shots before are actually from some other work that I just started doing or been doing for the last year which is pretty much volunteer at this point where I work in the Sierra Nevadas with an indigenous group and it's really interesting more than likely that sort of footage is going to go on another channel uh, it has a lot to do with documenting their culture and the different things that they have uh, especially these things which look like a bag to us in the United States or wherever you're watching this, but this is a tutu, or a lot of people in Colombia call them mochilas, but in Arhuaco, the tribe that has made them, a tribe that was not conquered by the Spanish, was able to retreat in the mountains for 
400 plus years, 500 years, there's a whole grand significance to them. And somehow, in some strange way, they chose me to help document it. And I'm sure there's other people doing it. And uh, just, just a very, very interesting thing, which also has to do with my personal path. And to be honest, I, I don't really want to talk too much about my path because I want to talk about the concept of this whole thing of personal development. And this really came from one of my good friends, a guy who is another coach, his name is Nick Catton. And he was talking about change and developments and all these different things. And I was just like, man, it is all you, it's all you. And then another funny thing happened is, uh, let's check this out. How do I go to here? Sometimes it's dark and I don't Not this, no, no, no. no. There's this other dude I follow. His name is Ben Staley. And Ben Staley, I started following a long time ago on YouTube because he shoots with Panasonic cameras as well as many other things and I'm down for shooting with any camera really that works. But since 2017, I've shot all of my stuff on Lumix. And this is a GH5, this is an old camera. And the first part of this video was shot with a GH5. And I'm shooting on the more new camera now, the S52X. But I started following Ben uh, because he was talking about the GH6 when it first came out and the G92 when it first came out, all these different things and, and then, you know, many different cameras, yada, yada, yada. And I was like, man, who's this guy that is an artist that, you, you know, you could tell from the way he's talking. I've always been an artist myself, but, you know, my main job is coaching and that's why this video is kind of weird on this channel. These videos never do well on this channel. And this channel is primarily geared to advertise my coaching to make money for me so that I can have a career. It's something that I work nonstop at. And if you follow the channel, you get it. But Ben was talking about stuff that was just so artist, so art and adventure, so from the core. And today he released this video. It is the 25th of July and Ben puts out this video called Your Story Is Your Own, and it's somewhat of a rant of his. Now, the video that you saw in the beginning was recorded on the 21st of July, so four days ago. Ben's video is very good. Put a link to it in the description, but also in one of those things that flash up here. Probably already happened, maybe not. Then we go back to my conversation with my buddy Nick, who is uh, does a lot with creativity and coaching and all these different things, and we speak about art, and we speak about relationships and the whole dynamic and all the craziness of it. And I go, man, this is crazy. I gotta finish this video, but it's gonna be a harder edit. And to be honest, I love doing these videos that are more film-based. But the last one I did was probably like a year and a half ago, or, or actually no, it was in October. Anyway, I don't do them often. They never do well on YouTube and they don't really do well for the function of my business. And I've always debated starting an, another channel with them. But dude, I work like 60 hours a week in my coaching. I do this other side project with the Arawakos. Why not, why not put filmmaking on it? And actually I'll tell you one other thing, another plug to Ben and his channel. He makes these videos about him just going out and shooting pictures. And this is something that I've done, I love to do. And yet there's just so many pictures that they wouldn't really work in a gallery. Uh, they could do well on Instagram. It's a weird thing because I think if you're a, a working photographer, a working videographer, a working filmmaker, a working coach like me, the photography that you love, the art that you really love, the relationships that you really love, they're almost not talked about. And so to be an artist, well, being a working artist is being like two to 10 different people. There's the artist that makes the money and then there's the artist that expresses and fills okay. him or herself with whatever, whatever things are there. Thankfully, I'm just a coach and I can just be art how I am. <laughs> but let's, let's get back to what we're talking about really in this video, is that your personal change is something that is so fundamentally important. It will align with culture. Hopefully it makes you success. Hopefully it makes you somebody that has fulfillment in their life and all these different things. But here's the thing. When we have society define us, when we have society tell us what is important, things like what should make us happy, what should make us fulfilled, what's supposed to give us meaning, and this usually has to do with money, it has to do with sex, it has to do with power, all great things, but taught in the wrong way taught in a way that is from deficit of not having enough, of feeling lost, feeling like we don't have anything. And so we just reach out to culture. We're like, I'm in pain, I'm in pain. I don't have what I need. And man, please give me what I need. Oh, oh money, sex, power, being cool. A lot of people like me, social validation, all these different things. And then I'm supposed to be happy. 
in, you know, I talk about this a lot because usually what happens in these situations is then we become unhappy, not directly from the money, sex, power, but like two steps down the road, like we get money, sex, power, and we're going like, man, I'm on top of the world. This is really cool. This is awesome. This is amazing. Yet we're not really having the the benefits of that. We still feel empty about something. We lose our job. A relationship goes away. Something goes wrong and then we collapse. And in that collapse is where we really harm ourselves. When we falsely inflate ourselves in what I call false answers, false solutions, we actually create another problem because we go, man, I have all this stuff. I have all these things. You know, if we go in my case, it's like, man, I can travel the world. I can have all this freedom. I can create all these things. Like I don't need art to make money. I can make money in these other ways and then have, you know, all this time, you know, maybe not so much time to be able to do the artistic things that I love. But I mean, literally I can choose my schedule any day of the week. It's just I choose me, I choose to fill it with 30 to 40 hours of calls as well as content creation, organizing the financial side of the business and all this other sort of thing. And all of that is super, super awesome. And see, this is part of the problem. We as men, as women, people of the world, we define ourselves by somebody else. And we define ourselves by somebody else because we don't have examples of people who can lead that for themselves. The people that can walk into the darkness. The people that get lost with things. And one of the reasons why, you know, Ben's video coming out today spoke so much to me. I'm like, God, I gotta, I gotta do this video is because what he's talking about there is something that I've been spinning around in my head for a while. And he answers it in his own way in a very, you know, clear and awesome way. So in this, Ben is talking about art and Nick was talking about art and creation and the throes of life. But in reality, we're all talking about humanity, about the human experience. And if you can't sit in your pain, you can't sit in your glory. And it's even different than that. If you can't sit in your pain, you'll never be confident. You'll never be you. You'll always be afraid to be you. You'll always put a mask on and run to the easier, softer way when hard things come. And this is not a way to live, create, be yourself, come from the truest part of your expression, and then you collapse every opportunity for connection. We are a, a country, a culture, a world of people who more and more are becoming starved for the human experience. And in order to be in the human experience, you have to have everything. You have to be able to walk into the darkness to understand that the light that you seek outside of yourself is within you. See, your, your personal life is absolutely defined by the things that only you know and do that are only yours. They cannot be anybody else's. And if they were anybody else's, then you would miss out on all those times alone, all those times within yourself, all those times in exploration. You know, one of the things about all of this time that I've had in Colombia, I don't really talk about it, but for five years I've lived here part time. I lived here through COVID and in the US and I raised four kids while doing it and built a, a new branch to my entire business of coaching, made tons of friends, had an amazing, uh, God, experience with people and color and love and spirituality and art and this amazing time with this indigenous group as well. Like I said, I haven't talked about it and I want to start talking about it because I have probably 20 terabytes of footage and photos that have to do with my experiences in Colombia and other places that I went. In one of the most amazing things about this whole time in Colombia for five years, which I haven't really talked about, and there's been other places too, many different parts of the world, but COVID really made it. Costa Rica, Mexico, and Colombia. There are parts that I didn't share with anybody. They only mattered to me or the people very close in my life. They had no relevance in society, culture, and how society and culture defines happiness. So the happiness was made by the entire human experience of pain, suffering, love, friendship, beauty, heartbreak, all of those things. It was all just for me. 
None of society defined it. And you might be thinking, why is that important? Because that's what gives you confidence. And if you're reliant on other people to define you, you'll never be you in any of the things that you seek. Love, relationships, your art, your passion, what you put out in the world is always defined by the hope that somebody's gonna like you because you haven't developed yourself enough first. One broken person cannot be completed by another broken person. And see, every single one of us in the human experience is going to be broken in many ways and you have to learn to fix it yourself. Why? So that you can own it, so that you can have your healing, your peace, so that you stop fearing this thing called life and living in that beauty. Um momento. That is so special because for that time, I had time only to myself. I had failures that I sat through, wins that only I could understand and be with by myself. I had times where I was full of life. I had times of heartbreak and failure and tragedy that came about in my life that I couldn't run from. And no one cared about it, and that's a good thing because it was personal and unique to me. And see, I think these things are so cool, you know. For the last five years, I built an entire branch of my business that has to do with divorce and custody and male's pain and tragedy. But before that, there was PTSD, there was sexual dysfunction, there was dating. There was all of these pains and problems that men have in our modern world. And I think everybody has these problems in our modern world, but I focused on men and mainly because I was having those problems and fixing them and helping others fix them and building huge communities on it that have lasted for 15 years. Links, links in the bio guys, links in the bio. But to me, there's no difference. There's, there's no difference with art. I remember uh, 20 years ago when I started coaching, all of my artist friends were like, what the f are you doing, man? Jesus Christ, you're doing all this dating stuff. And I was like, no man, this is art. And it is. It is. The human connection is one of the most important things, and that's always what I base things off of. And there's a ton of unwatched and unpopular videos on my channel about that and our nature and all these different things. But man, that's why I, I, I love these different people that I see on YouTube all brought together. Well, not by this camera. This is the GH5, but, you know, kind of, sort of. I always like oddball things. And let's talk outside of the artistic space because I almost love to talk about it too much, but we'll leave it for Nick and Ben and these other people to talk about that. But when it comes down to your personal excellence, it is absolutely defined by what you can do yourself. And if you cannot do it yourself, and if you, you rely on the image of other people, and you rely on the training wheels that our culture gives you, which is basically to sell you the fast food of self-help, what are you going to get? Who are you? Who are you when you're going to be lost? Who are you going to be when the real challenges come? Are you going to have to make up a facade so that you can fit in with other people? Are you going to have to fake it in front of other people? Are you going to have to live a lie because you can't sit in your own pain? There will be somebody that's more and more defined by what their insecurities are, reaching for a quick answer so that they get better. And so I guess this is somewhat of a rant as well, an homage to Ben's channel. I'm a fan an homage to my friend Nick, and then much so to all the different guys in my groups and communities that are a part of it that talk about this thing, that talk about the exploration, that talk about when you start out in a custody battle, you lose your kids, you can't see your kids, or they're battling with addiction and they're trying to get clean and sober and all these different things. They're dealing with PTSD, they're war vets. In so many ways, in the male experience and what I coach in, we end up alone. And one of the unique things about my coaching has always been you have to face it. You should maybe you're not right now, overjoyed to walk into the darkness on the trail, on the path that you can't see in a horizon that never ends and into the darkness where you have to find your own light in order to know what steps are ahead of you. You may not be overjoyed to do that, but let me tell you something. When my life falls apart, and I'm not wishing this upon myself, but hopefully if I live for another 40 or 50 years or even 10 years, inevitably tragedy is going to happen. I'm gonna be faced with something that I don't know. And to come back to that, that beautiful exploration of the unknown, the joy, the interpretation of the abstract within yourself, seeing a vision that comes from God knows where, 
in trying to just get a fraction, a tenth, even a tenth of what that vision is, of what that idea is out to express to the world, to connect to other people, is what makes it all worth it. And see, the greatest creation that I'm ever gonna make in my life is my life. And it needs to come from the pure expression of me, not a lie. And it hopes to connect and send to you, not to your fake facade, not to some image that is built by your insecurities to be something that you wished you could be, defined by a broken and insane society, to hit the purest part of you to make a connection. And I truly believe if we make those connections, if we make connections with the purest part of ourselves, with the purest part of another person, it is one of the easiest ways for us to get out of dysfunction. In any case, this video is getting a little bit long. If you're interested in my groups and coaching programs, they're in the links down below, and I'll leave you with some beautiful B-roll of my adventures without breaking any of the commitments that I have with the Ottawaco people and what we're doing. Lumix cameras, baby. Okay, un momento.